I'd like to welcome everybody and call this meeting to order of the Security, Safety, Transportation Subcommittee. It's Wednesday, December 9th, 2020 at 5.15 p.m. A roll call to create a quorum. Joyce Azak. Present. Tony Rodriguez. Tim Sullivan. Here, we have a quorum. This is subcommittee, we only have three. We need two for a quorum. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency, on March 12, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 20, pursuant to the order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from the open meeting laws requirement that meetings be held in public places, open and physically accessible to the public, so long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberations through adequate alternative means. This meeting will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access, Brockton Public Schools website, www.bpsma.org, YouTube and Comcast Channel 12. The public can access this meeting via this link, www.youtube.com forward slash the Brockton Channels. The agenda is as follows. Item, we have three items. Item one is purchase of buses. Item two, Department of Justice COPS School Violence Prevention Program grant update and three other business. Uh, Dr. Cobb, would you like to speak on item one, the purchase of buses? Certainly. Uh, if actually, Aldo can probably do a better job of it. He and I have been working on this uh, diligently for the last few, several months, um, probably about a year now, actually. Uh, so right. you can go through, pretty much cover the financial part, and I can certainly answer any questions on the details of the, uh, you know, what we're, what we're proposing. So. Yes, and the, uh, good evening, and the um, handout that, uh, Dr. Cobbs emailed everybody, um, basically a little walkthrough of what we've put together um, on what we're looking at. So we're in a situation where every three years we rebid our transportation contract and every three years, even though we reach out to other bus companies, first student is the only bidder that we get. So um, in the paperwork I sent out, there's a graph that shows that over the past 10 years, they've averaged about a 6% increase every single year. So we've gone from about 49,000 a bus, we're up to about 84,000 a bus now and climbing. So because of the pandemic, we didn't you know, utilize bus services all of last year for students not happy that we didn't pay them. But honestly, until the very last minute, we couldn't pay them. There was no um, legal um, loophole that allowed us to pay them. But once we, we uh, once I came through, you know, the school committee and mayor, um, everyone involved said that we, should, we, you know, we shouldn't pay for services that aren't rendered. And now this year we're starting off kind of the same way. We're not using the bus services. We've got very few people that are actually transporting. Uh, after the first of the year, that might change depending on, hit, on when we bring students back and how many. Um, but either way, we're gonna end up with an appropriation that we got from the mayor and the city council that we legally can't spend. So that money will go back to the city. So what we're proposing here is to take some of that money and um, when it goes back to the city, put through a request and ask that the city consider we buy all of our own buses. Now in doing so, we would um, basically control our costs going forward for at least the next 10 years, because once we buy the buses, they're ours. You know, the city would, would sell a bond to pay for them. And um, what we'd have is staff that we would negotiate a contract with. Currently the bus drivers are all Teamsters we do have Teamsters Union in-house here. So the goal would be to make them all Teamsters. We'd be very competitive on the pay rate on those drivers. But what Brockton has to offer that no one else really does is a municipal pension. So um, I think that'd be very attractive to the drivers. Our benefit plans, our health insurance is a great um, um, uh, system that we have in place. So I think that'd be very attractive. I think we could, um, quickly pick up enough drivers and enough really qualified drivers to run our own operations. 
Peggy Kalea, who runs all of our bus routes, already works for us. All the buses really, at this point, answer to Dr. Cobbs before they answer to Mike Thomas. So that part is already here. What we're really looking to do is get a dispatcher and the services under our control as opposed to under first student's control. If we can go forward with something like this, we have brand new vehicles. So for many years to come, um, very low maintenance, where we do probably less than 5,000 miles a year on a, on a bus. And buses run easily over 100,000 miles um, and more. Uh, I talked to, I think it was uh, Holbrook, told me they have seven buses that they that they um, vend, that a vendor supplies to them. And th some of those buses have 150,000 miles on them. So I think um, for us, it's a win-win situation if we can put some of our busing money towards that. It's another, it's another operation of ours, but honestly, we already do it. We already do busing. We're already involved whenever there's a bus that breaks down, whenever there's a bus accident, whenever there's students not picked up on time at a bus stop. We're already involved in all of that. What I'm looking to do here is just take the financial piece in hand and get it under control because that is, uh, again, if you look at my graphs and the charts we sent you, a 6% increase over the next 10 years or so brings us well over $100,000 a year per bus. Um, I know we only have like 45 minutes for this meeting. So um, what we, what Dr. Cobbs and I have worked on over the past few months is a location, which we'll have to go out to bid. So we would look to, uh, if the city council were to approve us, we'd look to go out to bid immediately. You know, that, that space would be a very large warehouse. It could not only house our buses, but it could house all of our operations, our IT, it can house our uh, craftsmen. Um, we would have indoor uh, space and long with outdoor space to put the vehicles in. We would house all of our um, facilities, trucks and vehicles. It would um, provide us with enough space that we'd have plenty of storage. As you know, now we scramble renting warehouse space and whatnot, moving storage around. It would provide a space for all of that. And honestly, we do provide space to the city in, in our, our warehouses for voting equipment, whatnot. And what would make this um, attractive for the city is that we would allow them to have space with us too. And honestly, if, if the city wanted to build a warehouse that we've been asking for for years, they could build it large enough to house all of us. So um, but this at least gets us started. Um, I'll let Dr. Cobbs talk about the radios and the cameras, all upgrades to what we currently have in the system. Um, and then I'll go back and talk about the, the money piece of it and how we can finance it. Great, thanks, Alan. So as you can see through the through the um, attachments, you know, the, the buses will come, you know, we're, we're ordering them at a, a turnkey operation. Essentially, we they deliver to us the radios installed, camera equipment installed, um, ready to go, and, and also with extra radios and camera equipment should we need to uh, service any of the vehicles, uh, change them out, which would come under warranty. Um, the radio system, will be, again, they'll tie into the system upgrades that we, we talked about at our last facility meeting, and they'll integrate you know, easily with, with all the equipment that we have, so we can get in touch with the radio drivers at, bus, at any time, you know, all the drivers. Also, the camera system that we are installing in the buses, um, we will have the capacities to look at real time. If there's any issue, we get a call on the radio from any, any bus saying there's an issue or whatever's going on. We can log in and go real time, look into that bus and see what's going on and dispatch police or, or, or a first responders or whatever you know, the situation may warrant. Um, and we also have the capability to record and, and retain any, any, any for evidence that we might need on the system. So it's fully integratable. It comes with a, a cloud storage service that we'll, you know, we'll pay for each year to provide all the integrated services. Um, that you know, that's kind of on the on the equipment side. It, you know, they, like Aldo said, they're, they're gas powered vehicles with extended range uh, gas tanks, 100 gallons, so we can do all of our out of city trips with them uh, for sporting events or, or band events or any other competition. ROTC. So again, we bring all that in house instead of just, and so we can we control the you know, whatever service that we need. Uh, so. And on those cameras, um, Dr. Cobbs asked for what three views on the interior and right. one view on, on the exterior. On the, outside to the driver's door, and then then the when the yes, and that's a good point. Thank you, Alvin. When when the the stop arm comes out for, when the bus makes the stop with the flashing light to the camera recording. 
that you know you can read license plates. So you know, so if, any, if anybody flies by the bus or on the with the stop arm down, we can we have a video, you know, uh, capture of that. Yes. So I'm I'm envisioning that when the the new location is set up, the main office, you'll have a couple of 80 inch TVs there with a map of the city of Brockton. At any point in time, you can see every vehicle moving around, where they are, exactly. you know, what's, what's exactly. happening. Um, in the cost allocations, I've allocated for uh, a serviceman with a truck and also a supervisor with a truck that will go out and you know keep an eye, make sure if we've got calls that there are bus stops where the kids are you know a little rowdy or whatnot, that, that supervisor can be there to supervise to you know, make sure the kids are uh, behaving, getting on the bus and what, and, and, and if there's too many kids there, find out who should be there, who shouldn't be there, but allows us to have, you know, our own boots on the street, um, keeping an eye on every bus stop, what's happening. They, they can also make sure that the, the bus stops have been plowed, you know, the streets are plowed and whatnot. Um, again, I know as in the past, Mike Thomas would do that. He'd go out at four in the morning. I assume Jim's going to out four in the morning, but as far as the bus routes go, it gives us another person to get out. So, um, about a third of the way into the booklet, we have some spreadsheets. Uh, well, one main spreadsheet I put in there has all the costs broken out. And what I did was for Troy at City Hall, um, you know, to discuss the financing, I showed three different scenarios where one is if we have a, a 10 million left over from this year, which I don't think we will, because it looks like we'll be starting a bus soon. If we had 5 million left over, and the other one's about 3.4 million left over, we could, we could do this without putting any money in, the city could bond the entire thing. But I just wanted to show that if we put some of what we have this year in, um, if we were to put 3.4 million in um, right up front towards the bus purchase, when I say buses, I mean the buses, there's a couple of trucks, there's computer equipment, there's getting the new facility set up. So there's a lot um, more than just the buses. But we can save 2.7 million the first year in doing this. Not only that, but that doesn't take that doesn't take into account we spent about 300,000 of our education dollars on field trips and band and you know football trips and whatnot that could be done by these buses at a fraction of that cost to us freeing up money in our in our regular education budget our net school spending budget um, along with the fact that if we own these buses we can do honestly trips whatever you needed to do all you really got to pay at that point is the driver everything else is a is an operating cost that's already in the in in the budget for the year. So anytime you need to do something additional, it's basically the cost of the driver. This allows us also to help get a handle on a lot of our uh, special ed and and um, specialty busing situations, because um, many of these are going to be equipped with the lifts to lift up the uh, wheelchairs. They're set up for for the small children with built-in restraints systems, you know, for the, uh, when I say restraints, I mean child seats um, for the, the medium group, for the any toddlers, the systems are set up to receive a seat that'll bolt in and connect to the, um, the bolted frame underneath. So we can, for our program, our, our teen challenge program, all that we met with Peggy Claire and, and between Mike Thomas and Jim, we've come up with all those questions. The hundred gallon gas tank, that was Jim's idea because why go to the gas depot twice a week if we can go to the gas depot once a week or once every once every other week? So um, the larger tank wasn't that much more money, and it puts us in that much better shape for the operations. Calculated in the cost, um, I have spoken to um, the past Teamster president and found out what they were paying, um, at least the ballpark what they were paying to Teamster drivers. So I. I did an analysis um, and a cost projection of, of a rate very close to that, along with our benefits package and what that would cost. That's all factored in on that page. And again, like I said, we still save money in doing that. Um, and I really think that um, someone getting a position with the city of Brockton um, is gonna appreciate their job a lot more than getting it with some third party company. So if the mayor is, um, in favor of this, and if you're in favor of this, and the city council's in favor of this, would be requesting about 11 million seven from the mayor, which he in turn would request from the city council. That can happen right away. Then, the once the project is complete, the city can decide whether they want to bond the full amount, whether they want to take some of the cash that we'll be returning and putting that towards it, um, and set up the, the the bond payments 
um, as they see fit. But meanwhile, we're up and running. So the 11 million seven is what we would like to ask the mayor, honestly, tomorrow or next week, so we can get the ball rolling on this because we, and, and Bluebird is a company we've been dealing with around state contract. We really need to get an order in by the end of January so that we're in good shape for July 1st. And they said we would be. So if we can get um, on the city council agenda, um, which is about two weeks from now, and then they'll send that to the finance committee. So right after the first of the year, we'll be meeting with the finance committee. I think it's January 4th, if I remember my calendar, um, or January 14th, and maybe it was the 14th. By the end of January, we could possibly have a commitment and move forward. If we don't have a commitment, we're still fine because we don't go out to bid until usually February or March um, for our services, for buses anyways. So at that point, we're out to bid. And like I said, in the past, we've only had the one bidder. And I think we'll probably be subject to that, you know, again. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, so this is for 127 buses. Some of them are large. Some of them are medium. There's, tw there's 71 passenger, you have 29 passenger, and the 35 passenger. It all changes slightly depending on if you've got child seats in there and if you've got wheelchair vehicles. All the seats will be equipped with the with the seats, and as we need more wheelchair vehicles, we'll remove the seats. So you can have a vehicle that holds two wheelchairs and uh, eight kids, or you can have a vehicle that has four wheelchairs and no kids you know, beyond those seats. So we're basically going to order everything equipped. And then we, in turn, will, um, I guess, change the capacity or change the seating arrangements as we need it. As uh, Dr. Cobb said, full cameras, full radios. We even are ordering extras. So if something does break, it's not a two-week repair. It's a one-hour repair. You know, our, our man goes in, our maintenance man, uh, you know, um, John, I can't think of his last name. We go in, and we ask if there's any special equipment or tools. And it just goes in, swaps it out, puts a new one in, we're back up and running. So uh, I ordered a dozen spare tires in this in this portfolio. Same thing, if a vehicle got a flat tire, we'd call a vendor like a Lynch and say, here's the brand new tire, please go out and put it on the vehicle immediately. You know, we'd set that up ahead of time. And um, most of our, our contractors like that are very responsive. They go out, change the tire. And meanwhile, we have two spare large buses and two spare uh, medium buses that are going to be available at all times. So we wouldn't be in a situation where we're ever down and we couldn't move any any vehicles. But again, the, the big benefit is we're buying brand new. And the gasoline, so all we'd have to do for the first few years is change the oil in these. Uh, keep an eye on the brakes, but again, doing 5,000 miles a year, the brakes are going to be, um, they should be fine for quite a while. Just the additional on the, um, the the camera system and the GPS system, all the buses will be, you know, incorporated with a GPS monitoring system, which is similar to the one that we use now for the facilities vehicles. We can, we have it assigned by driver. We can, we can, anytime it will, it'll track the vehicle speed or vehicle location, as well as the driver. So we can see what times, you know, buses make stops if they're late or if they're, you know, whatever, you know, if they're out of position. So we, we have real time tracking of the buses all the time with this assigned to drivers. So I know this is okay. <clears throat> one question. You sure. were talking about, you're talking about gasoline uh, buses and vans. Yes. Did you look into diesel? We did look into diesel. Um, the fact that we only do about 5,000 miles a year, the, the diesel buses would last us 40 years. <laughs> I think the bodies would rot away before mm -hmm. the engines did. And the diesels were a lot more money. I think um, the buses were in the 70,000 range and the diesel, the, I mean, the gasoline were in the 70,000 range. I think the diesels were in the 90,000 range. And you have to also be concerned about the environmental impact of the diesel engines compared to the gasoline engines. They run much cleaner. So, and you don't need the idle time to keep them warm like for the engines like you did with the diesel. A lot of good. times we have issues when we had that really bad stretch of sub-zero weather. Um, for a student, we had issues with several of their buses going offline, the diesel buses, because of the cold weather. Uh, you know, with the cold weather, you you have to have a like, warmer for the for the engines to keep them warm and plug them in, and that's obviously more more expensive as well, you know, for energy use. So, 
but if it's extremely cold, they still won't start with a large engine. Not, not a problem with gasoline engines. Right, and the gasoline engines, I said, heat up much quicker. Right. So I guess that's something I learned was that I didn't realize that these new buses shut off after 15 minutes of idling or something. That's, that's a state law. It's the limit. They're supposed yeah. to idle no more than 15 minutes, especially at a, at a school location. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the benefit of diesel years ago is you could let them run all night. Only five minutes, yeah, Dr. Yeah. Cole. Is it five minutes now? Five minutes. It used to be out in Boston was 15. Yeah, okay. Good. So I know you're the school yeah, committee. Question on the, the garage location. Yes. Mm -hmm. you have, do you have a spot already picked out? We do, but we have to, we have, we have to, we spot, scouted a couple of spots in the city and we, we have to go out to a bid for an RFP. So we, you know, we have to make sure it's, it's competitive you know, when we go out, but we have scouted the locations, yes. Right, and the big thing on our location is that we want a, a spot that's, you know, got major access to, to major roads without really disrupting um, residential neighborhoods. So when the bid goes out, it'll say a location within Brockton um, that's um, on, on major, you know, uh, throw fair. Fair, fairway, yeah, exactly. And that can handle this capacity. We don't want neighbors complaining, so. So we we found location that will meet the needs of you know the parking and as well as the uh, facilities again to consolidate the operations in one one location. And you've already thought about a mechanic and a yes. couple of supervisors. Or? Yeah, that's Correct. actually all in the in the paperwork. I've got a um, an administrator. All in there. Yes. Yep. So there's we have currently have you know Peggy Kalea, who's our co coordinator for transportation. Uh, we'll we have a position will be for transportation and a dispatcher and a supervisor. That you know it's mobile in in a, in a vehicle that gets around the city. And as far as the you know we don't need to put a director position in because you know that'll be under the my, myself as the operations director. Sullivan, I have a question. You had a question? Um, sure. Let me just, I had my, hold on. Let me just shut that off. So uh, thank you, Mr. Petronio and, and Dr. Cobbs. As always, um, very thorough. Um, I know from the first year that I started on the school committee, this was one of the biggest questions we had. And I'm happy to finally see it. Just let, let's give it another shot. We were hoping we were going to start this early in 2020 and then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. But given what we pay, on a monthly basis, this is the only way to go, given the amount of money we're gonna save and we own these vehicles. Um, it, it's definitely a huge savings for BPS. Uh, I know maybe the first couple of years, actually within the first year, I believe we're gonna start saving because don't we don't we pay almost a million dollars a month? Yes. If not a smidgen over? Yes, yeah, so um, we'll, we'll save so, at least two and a half million the first year. Yeah, I mean, and then this next year, the second year, it's going to be more of a savings um, because that's what we pay to lease these vehicles, and not all not all the buses are new. At least now we know we have new buses right. for our students, and they're going to be um, state of the art. They're going to have things that that we don't currently have. Um, you know, I know in the past, and I don't. I, I got to watch what I say, but when the times are tough, no one ever ever helped us. You know, the prices kept going up, and it's it's time that we need to look for what we need. For BPS and, and this is this is it. We need to start trying to find ways to save money. Um, and we are in a situation right now where we can. So definitely 100% supporting this. Um, so absolutely, absolutely. And and as far as like the employees and stuff like that, it's you know, it, having everything under one roof is just going to make it so much easier to have full control of it. So definitely, um, I think this is wonderful. Thank you so much for all the work that you guys put into this. Thank you, Joyce. Mark had a question. Vice Chair Mark Dacatino, you had a question? Yes, thank you. Um, so I was wondering, Aldo, as far as do we, you know, invest some cash and how much and all of that, is that something that this body would vote on or is that a city council issue really and not really i think it's more of a city council issue i think we we will we, we will use whatever transportation money we need this year to get through the school year but whatever we don't use we have to give back i right. can't take it and buy computers with it 
the money was given to us for transportation. So that money will go back to the city, go back into their account, and the mayor will say, you know, basically from that money, I'd like to, you know, uh, appropriate so much and put towards this. Or they might say, put that money away in the city stabilization account and borrow the full amount. That's up to them. If the interest rates are going to drop below 2%, I did my calculations here at 3%. If the interest rates drop below 2%, the city might say, leave our money in the bank and let's borrow it all. Because when are you going to ever see uh, money that cheap again? But that's why they start off by giving us what they call um, a ban, which is a borrowing anticipation note. So they basically front us the money from their own cash. When it's all said and done, then they go out and sell the bond. So and they usually add it with other city purchases. You know, this this 11.7 could be added to another 3 million of police vehicles and they go out and sell a bond for you know sixteen million dollars. That's what that's their end. And there's an there's an investment banking firm that the city uses. Um, used, um, used to be called uh, well, it's called Hilltop Investments. We've had them for over twenty five years, and they they handle all of that for the city. They they'll tell us what the bond and when and how much and what the rate's going to be. So they'll they'll be involved in in telling the mayor which way to go. So, um, but as far as we're concerned. We're telling the city we're turning back money and we're asking to buy these buses. And again, the city council last time we were there asked us to do this. The city right. council said, shouldn't we look at this? So okay. All right. So it's really a recommendation for or against out of this committee, the, the proposal to that the full committee moving it to the council, or really, I guess to the mayor, and then he would move it to the council. Is that the process? We request it from the mayor, and then he in turn brings it to the city council. Exactly. Oh, Aldo, can I jump in and ask a question? Sure. Um, just so we're clear with, because um, we don't know what funding is going to look like next year as far as Chapter 70. Mm -hmm. So can we be perfect? Like the city pays for uh, crossing guards, for example. Like that Correct. money comes directly out of that um, non-net budget. Yes. Can we make it clear that the mechanic, the supervisor, the dispatcher, whatever else is going to be in charge of running, because again, we'll be we would be op that. we're opening a full bus company here. Yeah. So I just want to make sure that it's clear that the non-net from the city has to pick up those positions as well, because that, that that can't be picked up. Um, exactly. I mean, obviously, it could be through technically, but I don't want it to be picked up by Chapter Seventy. Mike. And yeah. again, the committee obviously can weigh in. I'm just. I just want to make sure that that's clear when we go to the council that those positions need to be picked up by the non-net budget. Okay, I'll I'll make a note of that and make sure they understand that. But yes, yeah, because I guess we, what do you need? We don't get SOA money. I'm sorry, Tim. Uh, Aldo, what do you need from us from the subcommittee? A recommendation to go Rec forward. A, fa a favorable vote to move forward. Mr. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, if I could ask one more question. Yes, Mark, go ahead. I didn't see it. Uh, no, that's fine. Um, oh my God, I totally just lost my train of thought. Oh, Aldo, obviously, you've obviously been very good at making these estimates, and you know your numbers are usually pretty spot on. But you know, with something like this, there's always the potential for something unexpected or a, 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 you know, a, a cost comes in higher than anticipated. Um, have we built in um, a little bit of cushion in these numbers to absorb any potential you know, things that we didn't expect? Yes. Well, the, the biggest cost is the actual buses right. and that, we have, that we have on paper. So right. that's, that's a set price. Um, as far as the operations, it's all minimal other than the labor. So the, that would be negotiated with the school committee. So we've got labor and the benefits are provided by the city and that cost is, is a set cost. So really it's just the labor, but I do have uh, an extra 100,000 built into the capital purchase and in the regular operations of running the, the facility, I've got probably another 100,000 built in there for that. So I think, I think we got plenty of cushion because again, the biggest piece is the capital piece. That's all up front. And everything there is one set price. We got a price on the radios, price on the cameras, uh, price on the buses. All that is um, 
uh, Dr. Cobbs and I have gotten estimates, uh, not only estimates, we got actual prices from all of those. So um, I think we're in good shape there. So again, it's just like anything else, it's labor. Right. You know, and if, if the city at some point were to actually buy or build a, a, a big warehouse, we'd reserve, we'd, we'd take another couple hundred thousand off of these figures because now we're not paying rent to somebody. We'll basically be, you know, um, piggybacking with the city on this purchase. Right. right. Okay. No, I appreciate that. I mean, you know, I think this makes sense to, to me. I mean, we've just seen these costs going up and up and up. And, and I think that's, you know, I mean, for the numbers. I spoke, I spoke to Wayland, uh, the city of Wayland, um, three or four days ago. There, they put it, their RFP out. And again, the first student was the only bidder. Price was 81% up. So they basically screamed and hollered. And they negotiated down to a 22% increase from the 81% that they put out there. So I factored in a 10% increase in for student prices, but it could be much higher. Right. I think you're probably being pretty conservative with 10% based on what we're hearing and just different factors out there that and the rate this has been increasing. And not not for nothing, but you know, all those years that we were letting people go and struggling to keep the district together financially. They got their six percent increase every time. You know, I mean, there was no relief whatsoever. Yes. I just, I just had another quick question. So, um, I remember last year a few of us attended the mass conference on the Cape, and I know we sat in on a workshop. And we're not the only district that's going through this. I, a lot of districts are very frustrated with the busing costs, but yeah. once again, I think we're 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 leading the path for many other districts to follow us um, as th a lot of them have been talking about this. And uh, Brockton, once again, just, you know, starting off and doing this on their own. I believe Fitchburg, was it? I think Fitchburg had brought in their own busing and they just, they're not as large as we are, but. Um, right, Worcester has been looking at it. Worcester's bought a few buses, but they still contract most of it out. Salem, half of their buses they purchased. Um, Pittsfield, uh, the director out there told me that they purchased some of their buses. So more and more, I, I have an email list of everyone that's a school district that uses for a student and they're all, we're all going back and forth. They're all in the same predicament that we're in. It's almost as if, it's almost as if these bus companies have their own territories and no one bids against each other. No, definitely, so, definitely. And uh, the prices are just, they're, the prices are increasing year after year. Um, I know when we first started, I wanted to say they were in the 60s and now they're in the 80s. Um, and I do, they came out, I believe there was a, an assessment of some sorts, or I know there was a group that came out early in the year, right before we, we had the closing for COVID who, um, they came and they looked at some of the information. So it was even their recommendation. I believe that we take this route. Um, so no, definitely this is, this is definitely going to be a game changer and definitely a money saver for, for Brockton public schools, um, for years to come. So. Yes. Actually, Joyce, Joyce yeah, I'll, I'll, like I'll resend that report Friday. Yeah, I, re I remember it was because um, we had approached that lady yeah. and she was able to get us in for an appointment. Remember, yeah, it was came. months in advance. Yeah, they came actually, I think two weeks before um, we shut down, they came and, and, and did. And then they emailed us. I'm pretty sure we have, I think we sent that. I'll find it and resend it in Friday's packet. Yeah, I believe so. Um, yep. So, Mr. Sullivan, I mean, Aldo, do, do you need me to be specific on the number of buses in the motion? Um, no. No, I don't think the number of buses, but I would no, say... Aldo, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to do that because there's going to be a lot of variables. Really, what it would be is the will of the school committee to decide and give authorization for us to... Um, to continue the process, but to give a hard number doesn't make sense for many reasons, including financial. Okay. So how do you want the motion worded? So Aldo, does it allow me to send a letter to the mayor? Is that what we're looking for the motion? Well, for I the guess. appropriation, or how do you want to do it? <clears throat> right, usually the letter would go to the mayor saying we asked for an appropriation of, in this case, 11,700,000 to enter into um, to, to, to build our own internal busing network for the or busing transportation network for the for the school department. So um, I don't know, Mayor, if that's okay with you, if we 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, um, the vote would be to authorize superintendent to do that. And then when the letter came, I would be meeting the CFO and with you all, though, in your capacity to see exactly if we could hit that 11 million. If we can't, as the CEO, I would put forward a reduced amount. But the first, it's a couple steps, but the first step is uh, if the if the school committee agrees to even authorize Mike and his capacity superintendent to put a letter, letter forward to me as the mayor. So just a motion to authorize the superintendent. Do you want to make that motion, Joy? I'm trying to figure out what the motion is going to be. So a, a motion to, to authorize the superintendent. To send a proposal to, to the mayor. Sorry, I lost you, Alder, for a second. Oh, to send a proposal to the mayor that would allow the school department to have its own transportation um, fleet. Okay, so Dude, motion to- choice. You just have to put the word in there, appropriation, because that's what Mike's doing. He's speaking <laughs> appropriation <laughs> me... from me. That's a key okay. word. Okay, so a motion to authorize the superintendent, superintendent to um, send a letter to the mayor requesting appropriation for the, hold on, I'm sorry. For us to build our own busing network. Does that work? I think so. Our fleet? Sounds good. I apologize. I'm trying yeah. to write this down as we go. Yeah, busing, trans busing transportation network, something like that. Busing transportation yeah. network. What about the 11.7 million that go in there? I think they said no for now. I could right. be wrong. Correct. Okay. All right. Tony, you Tony, you on tonight? No. Oh yeah, there he is. Mm -hmm. He's here. Come here. Tony, you want, you, you want to second that motion? Yep, I'll second that. A motion has been Tony. made and properly second. The motion is to authorize the superintendent of schools to send a letter requesting appropriations for the transportation and uh, uh, buses and transportation in the city of Brockton for Brockton Public Schools. There you go. All in favor? Yes. Uh, yes. Is a roll call, Joyce. Joyce Azak. Yes. Tony Rodriguez. Yes. Tim Sullivan is yes. Vote carries unanimous. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Item two. Thank you. Item two. Department of Justice Cops School Violence Prevention Program. SVPP grant update. Hey, Sully. Is that you, Mr. Thomas, or Dr. Cox? Hey, Sully. Uh, oh, somebody. That's Mr. Minichello. That's Tom. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, quick question. Um, do you remember the other night I asked a, a question about, you know, busing money at the end of the year, what we might have left over? I asked Aldo about yes. the busing money and, and after... Uh, well, I mean, is there is there any monies um, that can be forecasted or that could go to this project from the leftover busing money of this year that we're not going to be using? Well, the, the way it would work is whatever monies we're not going to use, like last year, we returned $2 million to the city. So at some point in time, when we know where we stand as far as busing the students goes, if we know we have a certain surplus, uh, we make a request that the school committee send that money back to the mayor, back to the, um, to the city. That money would go back to the city, the city would put it in the stabilization account. Mm -hmm. And then when the mayor is ready to make his next action, whatever it is, he could say from that money that was returned, I'd like to make an appropriation. You know, he's got so much in the stabilization account, this would add to it. And then he okay. would just basically draw down from that. Um, it's not often that you'd say take money from one department, move it to another. You usually go back and forth from the stabilization mm -hmm. account. Okay. Yeah, so all, I guess all of my point is that perhaps, um, you know, a portion of that money, if we can forecast or try to predict, uh, could give us a sense of you know, how many vehicles perhaps can be um, 
acquired. Yes. Yes, I kind of did that in my presentation a little bit. I kind of said I was going to buy some of the medium buses with some of the money just to show that that's how it would go. But that's exactly that's exactly correct. That's how I would do it. Great. OK, perfect. Thanks, guys. I'm I'm just sort of sitting on the outskirts because I'm not on the subcommittee, but I'm you know listening to see what's cooking. So. All right. Cool. Carry so, on. You're doing a great job. <laughs> Sully, you're doing a great job. Carry on, Sully. Um, just real quick, Mr. Sullivan, if I can jump in. Um, we're getting close to the end, so I, I, I know Dr. Cobbs is just going to make this one a quick update on this grant. I think our next meeting's at six, correct? Five forty. Am I right? Five forty-five. No, oh. six. Oh, okay. Right, Melinda. That is correct. Our next meeting is at six o'clock. All right. So we're, am I have the right time? We're, we're about two minutes away. So I mean, it'll be more than two minutes. But if Dr. Cobb will have to have a quick update on this. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, I did. Again, it's included in all your packets. But this is just a update on the COPS award grant. That uh, again, for us, it, it's a it's a total of a, a seven hundred almost seven hundred thousand uh, dollar grant. Part of which we have to, you know, fund. But the the grant award to us and the Department of Justice COPS grant is for five hundred thousand um, dollars. That that grant is, you know, it's been awarded, and we're actually using the allocations right now. The biggest part of it will go to the upgrades to our FM radio network uh, system, and so essentially that requires us to. We have three main antennas: two at the high school and, and one over at the Baker School that really provide the coverage for the city for the radio network. So those are being um, installing new antennas that will increase the coverage and, and the uh, and the and it's also it changes us from an analog to a digital system. So we can it's IP based, so we can do much much more programming with the system. Um, it also includes changing the antennas at every school that uh, so it, and moving them to the outside of the building, changing the antennas and and uh, adding new base stations to every school. Uh, providing new handheld radios to every school uh, and and uh, to police cars and changing out all the equipment. So when it's when it's completed, we'll have a completely new coverage system. And again, I, I put some of the specs into the, the your packet so you can see what that involved. Uh, so that that we're probably halfway through the installation process right now. Uh, and, and so we expect to complete that hopefully by the end of this month. Uh, have a, have the system up uh, up and running. It, it provides a lot more capacity across the city and for us to connectivity to uh, the emergency services, uh, first responders, or police and fire as well. Um, the second piece of that grant is is it, it's, it's this grant is 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 allocated over a three year period. So in, in three years, we'll upgrade locks to the school system, to the doors, to the in, a, in the classroom in three of our compass middle schools, east, west, and, and uh, south to upgrade the door locks and, and, and the whole buildings but to make them compliant with the you know safety requirements for the school buildings and, uh, for intruders and you know, in lockdown procedures. That's kind of in a quick nutshell and we're, we're short for time. So. Just one question, Dr. Cobb. Yep. You did not include North Junior High or North Middle School. Well, because at the time it was planned on Is being there a reason for that. Shut, it was planning on yes, it was planning at the time when this grant was submitted. It was planning on being closed down to the students and being a major remodel. So we would have done it during that remodeling process. But, so at some point we'll have to go back and and. Uh, as far as door locks, you know, part of, part of our renovations that we're doing now, we are replacing classroom doors and replacing the locks anyway. So we're kind of just taking that piece on internally. Yeah, with, with the renovations at North, we're doing the door locks anyway. We're actually replacing the doors and, and the door locks. Yeah. So they're making, making them comply. The new steel doors and they, they with the new locks and, and, and the locking systems. Uh, Dr. Koff, what do you need from us then? You the work has already started? Nothing on this. It's already already approved this a while ago and the work has started. I'm just giving you an update on the award and, the, and the, it's in progress of actually doing the installation work. So. Anything else item two from anybody? Item three, other business? Mr. Mayor, did you want to jump in with the uh, COVID-19 update.
He's frozen. There he is. Hey, I'm sorry. I was trying to multitask. Hold on one second. I get the numbers in the other room. Hold on one second, please. My kids were talking to me. Okay. I found my daughter's harmonica. You want me to play it while we oh, wait? Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, please. <laughs> I want to hear it, Superintendent. <laughs> so, um, unfortunately, since we last spoke last night, um, we've increased. We have not increased, thankfully, our death count. We're at 320 loss of life still. 320 residents have perished. Uh, I did say last night that we believed we'd be at over 7,000, and we are indeed over 7,000 total cases. We're at 7,012 total cases overall. That is people that have recovered, people that have passed, and people that are actively dealing with positive cases. Uh, that number is 1,238 current cases right now in Brockton. So uh, deep red classification, high intake at the hospitals, ICU is, is very, very crowded right now. So um, unfortunately, it continues the same from last night. Thank you. Anything else on item three? Any other business? We need a motion to adjourn from Joyce or Tony. Motion to adjourn. Second. And we, a motion has been made and properly seconded. So roll call. Joyce Azak. Yes. Tony Rodriguez. Yes. Tim Sullivan is yes. Meetings adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.